Welcome to the Casual Cast. Episodes every Sunday on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud. And now, your host, Casual Savage. Hello and welcome back to another podcast which you can be a part of. Today's episode is going to be based on fitness and I'm joined with Fitness Infinity. So I have to speak now? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a good intro. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Dylan. No problem. Um, so yes, your channel is all about fitness, and from what I've seen, you've been doing it for over a year. Exactly, uh, like one year, uh, four to five months, I think. Very precise. So, uh, what age did you start training? Actually, uh, since I since I had always been a, a sporty child, so I was always into push-ups and pull-ups ever since my fifth grade. Uh, or uh, how old were you back then? Uh, then actually, then then in my eleventh grade, I ended up in a gym, and especially like uh, lifting weights and uh, and all that started in class eleventh, around nine to ten years ago, and that too because one of my friends. So it all started uh, all started uh, in indoors and ended up in uh, in gym and everything. So you started so from home lot. as well. Yeah, I started uh, since fifth grade. So. I was in hostels uh, and we used to do like marathon, half marathon and push-ups and pull-ups on daily basis. So at that time, uh, we don't have access to gym. But, oh, so uh, there was no, came... no weights at home either you could use? No, 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 nothing. Nothing at all. Only pull-ups using that home bar and doors and everything. But exactly, I started lifting in my class 11th. Uh, yeah. And since now, I've been lifting. Okay, so uh, what made you start training then? What what got you into it? Uh, uh, what made me started this thing? Actually, the thing is, I've told me now that uh, I told you that uh, uh, one of my friend actually uh, told me about this thing, uh, this uh, lifting weights and gym, and especially in India, uh, in Bollywood, actors are uh, too much into bodybuilding, like big big biceps. in class. I think uh, eight or nine, nine or ten around. So, so are you gonna be mind. the next Bollywood actor? No, Bollywood. Actually, I was not into Bollywood actor. But the thing is, uh, I used like from from years I I used to do push-ups and pull-ups. But lifting weights, it's kind of a different thing. Yeah. At that time, uh, it, I didn't know anything about gym and all. But it was a kind of uh, what I said that the attractive thing to do. So he basically taught you the way, or showed you the way to wait. And uh, that uh, gym, uh, I started around 10 years ago. Uh, the gym owner was really, uh, he was like very supportive. He told me uh, how things work and everything. So next day I told my father that uh, now I'm uh, stepping into my 12th grade. I, I want to be in gym. But my, fa- my father is like, uh, you are really interested? So I said, yeah, uh, actually I want to try. So he said, okay, go go tomorrow if you want. Take this some like bit of money, uh, give to that gym owner. Yeah. So gym owner said that do it for two to three days. Don't give me money now. If you're interested, then pay me the whole amount, whatever for the month. Do you anything. did you pay each time you went or did you pay monthly? Uh, at that time, uh, we all uh, like we uh, at that time uh, in that locality uh, we used to pay for a month for for one month and for for three months. Uh, but like after seven to eight years here in India, we used to have a membership kind of thing. We used to pay for one year and all that thing. But at that time, I used to pay for one month, and I did there for around seven to eight, seven to eight months. And then how when much I, uh, was it over there each month? Uh, the amount. Yeah. At that time, it was like uh, four hundred to five hundred rupees. 400 let me just convert that so i'll go with 450 which is average and this was per month per month a one dollar is around 69 that's so um, cheap (laughs) used to so for british people he was paying five pound and 26p a month and then for (laughs) where is dollars hold on us dollars he was paying seven dollars a month each month to use a gym that amount was around 10 years ago. Now it's like 1,500 per average, uh, per average gym. Like there are costly, there yeah, are costly that's, gyms. Yeah, that's the usual price over here as well. 
it's around now it's like it's like uh, the the average price you will get in all over india like 1500 rupees per month it's an average so if you convert you can convert that into dollars or euros if you want yeah, yeah that's 23 dollars and 43 cents uh that's still okay, quite so. cheap for the gym because when i when right. the one i was in america the gym i was at was 40 or 35 a month so you don't have a membership no no i don't usually take membership i usually have contacts like contacts from some of my friends and uh my relatives and the, maybe a gym owner used to be uh into my circle so i used to go i used to train people and then in return i get some clients and i do work out for free so i don't usually pay but yeah if i travel around like like, like as i say like i'm doing uh i'm not doing workouts since past five to six months so i've been doing like uh, trx workout and using oh, resistance yeah. band so then how are you me. finding them compared to weights do you like it still or yeah actually what i believe is that uh it's all about resistance training your body your nervous system don't know about uh, how so many time, time uh, under tension because yeah, it's, it's all about time under tension and the progressive overload uh it's all about uh giving a stress and uh, exactly the amount of uh, stress for your muscles for growth uh, your nervous system doesn't know about uh, you are lifting some uh, the, the olympic uh, barbells or you are lifting some stones it all knows uh, uh, it actually goes with like how you shock your nervous system how you train your body in a correct uh, correct shape that i call uh, a yellow uh, oh, sorry uh, the thing i call yellow zone you have to work out in that zone uh, you don't have to push yourself too much or you don't have to be uh, uh, be under train so how are so you training are... legs then with the uh, resistance bands and trx if i tell you specifically uh, resistance bands these things don't work that much good with your legs workout for quads and for hamstrings but yeah i have a swiss ball yeah so it's like a set or uh, where i live I have Swiss ball, I have TRX, I have resistance band, I have a couple of uh, weights. I have uh, taken it from my nearby, what we say, that uh, where the craps used to be sell, uh, sold, that the, the iron thing, which is like no use, people throw there. And I just took it from there. I painted it. It's like a heavy metal ring made up of a car. Uh, a car, what say? Car wheels. There are yeah. some uh, discs. Uh, disc in the car wheels right so that disc i took it up from that uh uh crap or something like and i've painted that whole thing and now i put it on my uh, you know back and then do push ups and i uh, use those things as a resistance but for yeah. legs i use two squats like for example i have made uh, a workout for me as well like uh, number how are you feeling of... overall though because after weight training you feel sore do you still feel sore after trx actually uh feeling sore is not the criteria that you are growing feeling sore uh doesn't mean that if you are feeling sore the next day you have done a uh, done a great workout yesterday it's totally fine that if you are not feeling sore the only thing matter is the resistance if you are if you have done uh x number of uh sets and y number of reps yesterday and if you are doing uh x plus one or y plus one number of sets and repetition respectively in the next week that means you are progressing in terms your, of strength are you finding your workouts quicker just trx and resistance yeah actually i haven't lost any kind of uh muscle or i haven't lost uh my weight so I'm feeling quite good, and most importantly, I'm in running. I used to love running every single day, but due to uh, heavy loads and college thing and all, I used to went for a gym, uh, work out there for 45 minutes. And the running part is always missed. But now, as I'm not doing gym, so running is the main thing I used to do every single day. So and what, I'm feeling uh, better. What about your uh, shins and knees? Any pains? Uh, keep those things in mind, like basic stretches. Your or nutrition accordingly so if you are training uh, sensibly if you are uh, if you are eating accordingly then there are no kind of like knee pains or uh, how long are you running or... for each day i like uh, 4 to 5 kilometers that's it not too much or uh, not that how long does that usually to... take 
for me it's like uh, around less than 25 minutes i don't use such such kind of applications uh, like yeah. uh, I mean, like uh, i think i have seen lot of people from europe and from us they used to like lot of applications and smart sm- smart watches so i don't yeah. have anything yeah i i, so I, I don't uh, like using them either i don't think they're accurate yeah actually i don't use them i just uh, concentrate on my breathing uh, and and actually uh, the the every single day uh, i used to track a record on my breathing rate so if i feel good i uh, pace my speed like why increase my speed and if i like like out of breath i then slow down oh so you do but intervals so, yeah not like i used to like constant running yeah but thing is uh, i used to like uh, we increase my speed uh, in terms of weeks so yeah. when i think i'm i increase it like why uh, run bit faster and if i think that i'm uh, not able to reach that milestone then i used to slow down my pace so that's how thing goes and morning running and evening uh, simple home resistance workout and yeah. i'm feeling good actually i don't i haven't lost any kind of muscle mass or anything like that so how but, about but your uh, how about your diet then uh, do you eat clean have you eaten clean <laughs> so diet is like uh, if i talk about uh, in general that like most of us uh, uh even i uh, been a child being a child i love to eat pizzas and burgers because <laughs> because at first they are like mouth watering and then second thing is they are feasible especially in college time on st- students life and they are like quick fixes to blunt your hunger so whether you are traveling or studying in college these things are uh, somehow they will come in front of you and you will grab those things so it's totally quick. cool to eat those yeah they are quick and every and actually everyone love to eat those things because human have cravings they have so they have such kind of bacteria in their body that they tend to crave such things like that's, coffee that's what and... i do um what what i found though is coffee gets rid of the appetite so if you're feeling hungry coffee just get rid of it and you can keep going yeah. yeah coffee coffee is good and there are a lot of other things to eat while but uh, if i go with my diet that that i will that i will say that uh, actually i'm coming from a state in india uh, that that is punjab so where so much of uh, so much emphasis is given to food yeah so so i got the privilege to eat uh, very nutritious foods like you used to say kidney beans we we used to say here rajma and then lentils uh, then yeah, tofu lentils paneer, like that lentils tofu paneer paneer we used to say paneer the like cottage cheese and a uh, lot of other kind of grains and that too on the daily basis so now i came at a point where i know what my body actually needs vegetarian food or non vegetarian food so i call myself as flexitarian <laughs> actually it's all about knowing your body what your body demands and then you eat accordingly so this is this is what i actually follow it's quite simple and bit of a calorie calorie measurements that's it and then what's your opinion on these different types of diets such as keto diet have you heard of it yeah there are a lot of like keto diet then raw diet then vegetarian diet then paleo diet then then atkins diet there are a lot of diets right but but every single diet has a one single specific goal and that is calorie deficit yeah that's the, the one main thing yeah, that's the main thing so it doesn't uh, you, you don't have to be that much uh, that much aggressive and that much conscious about your diet just uh get some uh calorie counter weighing machine or uh, hire a coach and know your diet that what is your maintenance calories and what foods you are actually love eating and bring all those foods and make a diet chart and set your calorie intake and eat for and eat foods and fruits and junk foods whatever you want accordingly i'm not saying those things are healthy but yes it will uh help you lose weight what what i've been think... doing is because i've been dieting for this is the 8th week now once a month 
I'll treat myself to anything. So a uh, one whole day. So I'll probably wake up normal time about seven in the morning. Not eat okay. until about five p.m. and then I will have I anything I want. To. So I usually it's a pizza and donut kebab meat. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then oh, we used that to gets rid of the cravings. You, you don't eat whole day and you eat after uh, like five to six p.m. Th- this is only so, once a month when I have okay, a cheat once, day. Okay, okay, once a month. Don't yeah. drink anything. Expect water. <laughs> if you are focusing on eating fat, because these things uh, gives you too much calories. You don't even think about it's that. It's all them sugars. Uh, yeah, yeah, too too much too. Because suppose if you run for for an hour, you will lose like three hundred to five hundred calories. And that's a But chocolate same bar. Time, <laughs> yeah, same as chocolate bar or same as. Um, Uh, a candy or a protein bar or a chicken burger, whatever from McD. It's like more than five hundred calories. So you can't you can't outrun a bad diet. So you have how to focus. How often do you like, have a cheat yeah. meal then? Cheat meal. Yeah. How often do you have a cheat meal? A uh, fun uh, cheat meal is like having a burger or pizza, right? Uh, yeah, literally just having anything and not worrying about the calories and what's in it. Uh. Actually, it's like a, a depend upon a chance. Like I don't know. Like tomorrow, my friend is going to treat me with pizza, so I don't uh, keep those things in track. If I get, I eat. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then, because nobody wants to reject. Oh man, I don't want to eat from you. Like he is giving me treat, then then grab that opportunity. But uh, if I eat that thing, I um, back of the mind, uh, I used to think that yeah, I have. Uh, for example, if I'm on a Cutting straight, or if you want to gain some, like I have to gain two to three pounds in a week or in a month. But that is not uh, what my mantra is all about. I used yeah. to be like flexible. Suppose if I suppose if I eat uh, too much in the first two days, I try to uh, maintain a balance for the next three to four days. So it's all about a weekly process. Uh, you you will not uh, gain fat. From eating one donut, or you will not uh, lose weight from eating a one salad. So it's yeah, all about I, the long. Yeah, I think course. I think that's over um, exaggerated. Saying if you eat one donut during a diet, then you're gonna get fat. It's it's <laughs> over exaggerated. Exactly. <laughs> the whole right. of the fitness industry over exaggerated. But if you watch Bradley Martin, look at the food he eats. I mean, I'm sure he oh. eats clean, but once in a while you can see him eating a bunch of crap. Honestly, they are they are doing it for their movies. They are they are multi millionaires. Actually, that, they are bread and butter for them, like to be in a shape. But once they get over that movie or whatever that window, they are uh, making their all the progress. They started eating what they like. So, so uh, what have, what do you do or how do you stay motivated going to the gym, especially now because you've had school in the way? What's been your main motivation to keep going? Actually, uh, well, for me, it was never that I needed a motivation. Being honest, to do workout because it was a kind of ritual to me. Since to uh, just work out I, as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Since since my my eleventh grade till now, it's like a ritual to me uh, to go out every single day, lift weights. Uh, here on Sunday, gyms gyms are used to be closed, so I go out and run and do some body weight body weight workouts. Uh, so that part I always loved to do, and never wanted like a motivation to do so. So yeah, I saw your video came... where you done it in the park. You done the variations of push-ups. Actually, I'm glad that uh, a YouTuber, a pro YouTuber, watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm telling them, so it's, it's a kind of a natural to me. So I always believe that uh, a person always needed a, needed a motivation when he or she is not a passionate about that thing. So it was a kind of habit for me, and by doing that daily workout, it actually gave me motivation. So it was never the other way around that I needed the motivation to do so. Because what do you do when you're of, feeling yeah. really tired? Then do you still uh, go, or do you do it at home, or do you have a day off? Like, uh, what I'm getting tired after workout? You no, no, no. Like, so say, say you've been at school all day. And then you want to go to the gym after, or you plan to, but you're too tired. Uh, actually, I'm uh, right now. I've done my all schooling and engineering and post graduation. But by as I said, I've been doing this thing while my while uh, uh, clearing my graduation. 
I always have one thing in my mind that I have to go to gym. I have to lift like 45 kgs of bar, like 45 kgs of barbell curls. I have to do like 120 kgs of squats. I always have a, a a short short note in my bag that this day I have to do this much of uh, lift and this much of weights. And in front of me, the physics lecturer is the the lecture is going on. So my whole focus and intention was on gym on my workout so it was like study yes yeah, study was like 10% and 90% was like that when i'm going to do uh, uh, do, do gym and then later my diet and nutrition so i was more focused on this thing not the main engineering do you think uh, so, doing gym has helped you get through the stress of school has it relieved uh, your stress yeah doing uh, doing daily workout and daily gym actually gave me a sound sleep rather than uh, keeping me away from the stress because at the end of the day what matters to me is just getting a sound sleep not uh, uh, actually i don't feel any kind of stress in engineering uh, i did that thing uh, because i have don't, i don't have any other option after uh, clearing my class 12 but uh, what you asked me about stress i haven't experienced any kind of stress in engineer actually i was very cool about it i was doing engineering I, 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 and actually i was wh- wh- i was into too much of activities like boxing and weightlifting and then for the first two years i have done weightlifting then boxing and i uh, and the the guys who are into sports they used to get leave they don't have to attend the classes yeah i was like having chill okay chill chill that the we are getting leaves and then for exams we used to cheat and for two three days before we used to you know mug up the things and everything like math calculus and everything so it was like and being uh, uh, coming from a science background i was like average student i get out of uh, like 80% so i was not that much poor in studies i was good in studies yeah so stress stress was not into this thing so okay and then actually who his who has been or who still is to this day is your inspiration in the fitness industry one person inspiration as a uh, uh, idol role model you, yeah actually uh, if i'm being honest person. that I, should there are none because uh, I don't know about YouTube since 2013. Don't be, uh, believe me that what I actually uh, thought that videos are like being created by someone, and I thought it was like some pre-made Bible kind of stuff which are already being made and they are true. So I uh, since since 2013 to 2014 I was only into football, watching Messi videos, right? So I was not following YouTube for some. uh fitness guys or some you know fitness people but yeah. after 2014 i started uh it's i, I think at, at the end of 2013 i started following a guy the from youtube and his do name you know is his name? Uh, do you remember his name uh, yeah I, i still follow him his name is elliot hulls yes i watched and, him uh, he's probably one of my first as well exactly and and he actually gave some honest advice and when i started watching his videos it was like my four years uh four to five years of experience in uh the fitness thing so i can relate that this guy is honest or not so i and find look where uh, he started as well he started with working out in a park building his business yeah, from the park exactly, and now he exactly. now you had a, opened a gym then he opened up a bigger gym yeah now he's a successful entrepreneur so that that his past videos Uh, taking his van, pushing his van. His his van is getting out of uh, no fuel, and he used to train his clients uh, in a garden with sandbags, with kettlebells, tires, so that, recycled yeah, stuff. Yeah, T- totally crap. And that thing actually motivated me. And the same thing I did for my home workout, for my home thing. I used to go to that uh, nearby crap store, and I used to. took from uh, the things i actually needed so that guy actually inspired me so i can say that that the elliotels was the reason behind my uh, kind of inspiration thing because i am looking that same path from for me in the next 5 to 10 years so, yeah yeah and then and for, so this brings me to my next question yeah. actually who are yeah. your favorite fitness youtubers elliot holes is one who else yeah. do you uh, watch 
Next is Juji Mufu. He, uh, he, Juji Mufu. His name is John Call. John Call, but his YouTube channel is Juji Mufu. Oh no, uh, I've never heard of him. Yeah, he is like uh, doing like lot of flips, and same time he's lifting weights and uh, like doing crazy uh, shit on YouTube. Like literally <laughs> crazy. Does he do calisthenics as well then? What? Does he do calisthenics as well? Uh, so he do some sick, sick stuff, sicker than calisthenics, and <laughs> you should uh, search at Juji Mufu on YouTube because he's like a really flexible guy doing a three sixty degree flips, uh, lifting two uh, hundred kgs of deadlifts and doing squats of two fifty kgs, and he's like totally a uh, flexible kind of guy doing full stretch splits. Is he natural and- as well, or? No, I don't think he's natural. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> I don't know. He's not. He's not natural. Like we, we are like being like, a, a decade I'm into this thing. So from one glance, I can tell that this guy is natural or not. So it's actually clear. A lot of people rambling on comment section that he is not. He is natural. He is not. Like guys are fighting, but those who are actually into this thing since years, they will uh, know that guy is natural or not in the first glance itself. So it's quite understood that he. Who else is there then uh, that you actually like? No, I. Why well, say that? It's it's not saying that he's not natural, so I should have hate or not. I like. No, no, no. Guy. I mean, who else do you watch in the fitness? A part of uh, Elliot Hurst and Juju Mofu. Uh, I used to watch Strength Wars, and not oh, that, not yeah. not anything else. Those those three. Oh, you never watched uh, Athlete next? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to watch Athlinex, but then he started making a lot of clickbait. Oh. <laughs> he was like totally a uh, businessman. He used to make too many videos of clickbait and everything. So uh, to promote like, his uh, Athlinex like, programs. Okay, everything. Uh, it's like everyone does those things, but the thing is, uh, what I wanted to watch, I clicked those videos. So Juju Mufu videos, Elliot Hurst videos. Give some kind of meaning uh, to me at least. And you say that uh, the athlete X, uh, those uh, like what I said, uh, his videos are like. You watch Bradley hey, man, Martin as well, though, don't you? Yeah. Do you still watch Bradley Martin? Bradley Martin. Who is Bradley Martin? I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> Bradley Martin. Okay, okay, okay. That big guy. He <laughs> owns his own gym, right? Yeah, zoo culture. <laughs> yeah, zoo culture, zoo culture. Yeah, yeah, I know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know that much name and all. But yeah, I've seen him on YouTube. I don't know that much guy because I've seen like two to three videos. How about C C Fletcher? How about C T Fletcher? Yeah, C T Fletcher. Uh, he's a poor old guy now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, the actually uh. The every single uh, a guy or a te- teenager who is hearing this should know that uh, going on a natural thing will give you some consequences in your later life. So you have to see these people who are facing consequences now. So they are like a simple open door that they have done something uh, natural with their body and now. they are suffering from those consequences so if you are like i ki i want to get the body of like same like city fletcher or body like some so called but then you have like, to remember they've worked out for years it didn't just happen overnight uh regarding gains from e- no, that everyone story. everyone in general they people think it's easy to get there and it's just lifting weights it's repetitive constant over the years eating clean Going to the gym consistently. <laughs> like for natural, those who are natural, it's a really tough job. Like to uh, have your body fat in a single digit is a really very tough job. Well, for I natural. think athlete athlete next is natural. He's about fifty, or he's in his late forties, and he's still deadlifting six hundred pounds. Yeah, I wouldn't say that he's not natural. I was telling about that uh, CD Fletcher and. CT and that uh, Juju Mufu, I know because they are not natural. Because <laughs> there is a symmetry. 
there is a proper symmetry that if you have that much of height you can't gain like 22 inches of biceps so there is a body symmetry like human body is made up of some particular protocols and if you and if you are breaking those protocols that means you are taking something unnatural so that that's how you get to know that if he's a 5 6 and he's having 23 inches of biceps good he's not natural it's simple so and then this what, is a, what what would you give your advice to beginners who are starting off not on YouTube, uh, but on uh, in fitness. <clears throat> Actually, well, I would like this. Uh, I would like to break it down in, to two points. Like okay. for teenagers, for teenagers, I would say that uh, know your future goals. If you are into studies and just love to build big biceps and abs, focus on nutrition and training. Don't push yourself hard because it will just uh, wasting time and money. It's a consistent approach, like. Hard work, consistency, and being persistent over months and years. Yeah, don't be and the type for, of guy that works out yeah. for the summer just to get abs. Yeah, exactly. And for professionals who work like 9 to 5 and want to get healthy life, uh, get a coach or get a trainer or by yourself, check your calories, what is your maintenance calories, eat accordingly. If you want to lose fat, eat 200 to 300 less calories per day if you want to gain weight or gain muscle eat 200 to 300 more calories like multiply your body body weight by uh, 10 to 12 and eat those calories because falling for fitness marketing scams to lose weight via using pills and via using uh, fit teas and whatever this thing not going to work they will only empty your pocket yeah, so I think I think most supplements nowadays are just scams. You don't. It, it's they all about scams. food. They are scams. The only supplement you need is whey protein. Nothing else you need. That's what I believe. Rest people have their own opinions. Yeah, I th- I know, but I think that's true as well. I think food is the number one source to build size yeah. and be a healthy, not supplements. Yeah, it's all a uh, calories thing. It's all about calories. If you are like, as I said, if you're a professional working nine to five in office, then get a whey protein, get yeah. a shaker, put two to three scoops in that shaker and drink, drink it regularly it after day. two to three And you can still get you protein in. For me? No, no, no. People who are working nine to fives, they can have a protein shake and just drink it throughout the day. Definitely, they can drink it. And if they're looking for fat loss, if they're looking for muscle build, they don't have time to cook food. They should take, definitely they should take. They should take, uh, youngsters should take if they are not able to get the good quality food in their hostels or in their college. Then so again, you can fast- also try intimate fasting if there's no time during the day. Yeah, they can do those things also. But I think uh, if I talk on the behalf of Indians, uh, nobody does fasting in college. They used to eat random things. and But anything. what I'm telling is yeah, anything they want. But what I'm telling them better eat quality foods if you don't find any kind of good thing uh, good foods then buy a whey protein shake it's quite simple and then I th- because, i'm gonna go on to one more thing i actually didn't think of this uh yeah. the biggest myth in the fitness industry for me i think it's everyone says that the food you have to eat is expensive yeah. but what i found when i've actually decided to go out and buy the food it's cheaper yeah. than what everyone says People say you. I'll talk in pounds, but try to convert it to dollars. People say you're going to be spending about fifty to a hundred pounds a week, or and that's about seventy to one hundred and twenty dollars a week. But for me, I've been finding I've been spending 50, uh, about thirty to forty pounds a week. So it's inexpensive, in my opinion. Yeah, actually, you are quite right about it because you may be buying uh, veg. Vegetables and fruits, like totally crops, and crops are not that much expensive. And the people who are saying that uh, healthy eating is very costly, they must be talking about some fitness. Let's products let's go into something products. else. Actually, let's talk about when people buy uh, like some nice shoes. That's probably what a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds. They're gonna buy them like nothing. But if they want to spend it on food, oh no, nope, I don't have that money. We don't have, because we don't want to do that thing, so they don't have that money. <laughs> yeah, because they're not committed to gym. They're more committed yeah, exactly. to buying something materialistic. 
exactly because gym is not the uh, thing you have to do for uh, making your body healthy and thing what i actually think that there are like four factors which determines a healthy living that is eat correct uh, walk daily uh, sleep better that regular patterns of sleep and uh, a proper hydration and your regular diet so it's a basic thing which people generally don't don't uh, don't follow because of their lifestyle and their previously eating habits there are a lot and of I, th- I think it's just excuses as well for most people yeah, they they, they find excuses. an excuse <laughs> Yes, they are because they are uh, because because I have been coming from hostel life, college life, and there are a lot, lot of uh, uh, like we used to like three to four people in one single room, three three beds, two beds, and every single day I used to take my bag, take my uh, gym bag uh, after I uh, come from my college, like after four to five p.m. and I took my gym bag, I wash my face. <clears throat> sorry i wash my face and then i go to gym and my roommate used to say hey man let's play this let's play cod let's play pes let's play fifa but i said okay uh, we'll play in the, uh, at night but now i have to go to gym yeah. and so he used to say oh man i'm too much tired but they they are not getting tired talking with their girlfriends for hours and they <laughs> they will not get tired uh, by eating uh, junk food going downstairs they will not it's get tired it's the work uh, life balance that they yeah, need to do but they don't want to work yeah, as I said previously, these guys needed a motivation because they are not passionate about those things. They are passionate about playing video games. They are, uh, they are passionate uh, passionate about doing X and Y things. Actually, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, because I also love playing PES. Well, I used to play FIFA, but now I love PES since past two, three days, uh, two, two to three years, not days. But the thing is, I keep a balance. I used to play games at night, maybe, or I... When morning, as I say, I used to do workout, running. So it's very important when you keep a balance. If you from morning to night you are playing on console that, that FIFA, then it's not going to work because it will make your body uh, very unhealthy, and you will not get the get that uh, what I say motivation because those people need motivation. Who are not not passionate about uh, those things. If you are love to play games, you don't need motivation. You will just plug in your. Uh, PS4 or Xbox, whatever console you have, and you will start playing because yeah. you are really love to do those things. So it's all about what you actually love. But then I, I think it's about to get started. You have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yes, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone because you can't uh, tell but... people to start something but stay where they're comfortable. Throw your words out of your mouth and say, "Do this and do that." So it's all about. <laughs> care of your family and your loved ones so actually i've been doing this so i'm telling you by an example <laughs> has it been working for you yeah it's been working i, I used to tell my father uh, like he is into army and he's very fit uh, he crosses 50 but he has still flat stomach and everything but he has some digestion issues and everything people used to have gas struggles and everything so uh, i used to tell him that uh box then i actually realized that you don't you can't just uh, Show your words, like do this and do that, because they are not going to do that. You have to leave you have to ease them into it. Start yeah, wake slow. up at five. Yeah, wake up at five and tell your uh, partner that let's go to workout. She or he will definitely join you. You can't just say at night and expect it a miracle in the next morning. So that's how it <laughs> works. Because it's, it's actually very hard. I used to be a uh, used to do workouts in evening. Uh, past years but yeah. i always want to do workout in morning because it saves my lot of time in evening because i have that kind of schedule when uh, i have lot of work in evening and i can't do workouts at the same time yeah, I, used to, my... I used to go mornings all the time i found it better but now i'm going about 6 p.m finishing about 8 p.m getting home for about 9 p.m and then and you upload yeah. regularly on youtube <laughs> And then it's literally a repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. So, so it, since uh, since past two years, I've started working out in morning. So, uh, making that habit for yourself is actually very difficult. I so think it's about for, enjoying it. You have to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, then there's no yeah, point. Find a way exactly. that you're going to enjoy it. Don't do some crazy workout that's going to take you about two hours alone. And I would say don't train in massive groups. Train in probably a group of three maximum. 
but ideally, yeah. I'd say in twos or ones. So, you work out alone or you work out with your workout partner? Uh, mine mixes. Some days he's there, or some days he goes okay. in the mornings and I'm in the evenings. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, it's difficult in the beginning, but you have to be consistent, as I said, consistent and hard work, and uh, you have to be very patient uh, if you want to see results. So that, yeah, that's, that's the main goes. thing. Don't expect like twenty-three inch biceps yeah. in two weeks of working yeah. hard. Uh, and six pack abs in <laughs> summer. <laughs> it's a long process. A long very process. long process. But it's worth it, I think. I think overall you're going to feel a lot more better about yourself. Yeah. What I used to believe and say to my friends and clients that consistency beats intensity. So, yeah. so if you are consistent over a longer period of time, it will help you making it a habit. Even if but you're just going example, to the gym to walk on the treadmill for 20 minutes, you've still gone and done something. If I do 20 push-ups, I still feel that pump in my chest and in my triceps. So, you have to be, once you are consistent, you will not lose gains. because You, you have to that, be oh, smart I... working around yeah. your schedule. You can't just exactly. make a schedule on the day. Literally think about a schedule when you've got time free, how long you want to stay at the gym and work on it. Exactly. So, uh, do you listen music while working out or... You just want to listen that sound of barbells and lif- lifting weights. <laughs> I do both. I do cardio and barbell and dumbbells. <laughs> <laughs> so you listen music or uh, no music can just work out? Uh, I alternate. Sometimes I like music. Sometimes I don't. Oh, okay, okay. I don't. Like, but are... For cardio, because ca- cardio is boring, I have to have music <laughs> in there. <laughs> Okay. What about those fancy workouts people used to put up on social media like uh, flying push-ups? <laughs> oh, forget that. I don't see any point in it. Yeah, exactly. Like people are like crazy about muscle-ups and... Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, fa- it looks good do- seeing it, but I don't really care for it. Exactly. It's all about your personal choices and actually and those things uh, doesn't come when you want... Unless I'm a gymnastic or something or I'm going to be full-time in calisthenics, then I'll do it, I'll train for it. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. yeah, I don't see a point in doing it. So it's, but it's all about your niche. Uh, so if we as casuals are just doing calisthenics, then who are going to provide us tutorials of uh, Photoshop <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so it's very uh, important that uh, you should may, uh, keep a balance between our YouTube and uh, your workouts. Yes. <laughs> Or else we're gonna miss your videos. <laughs> and that, uh, yeah. So then, after coming from home, you used to like make all those videos for YouTube. Or uh, in the so morning? my schedule now: um, I wake up at six in the morning, have breakfast, then I go out until until the afternoon five p.m. No, four thirty p.m. Now get to the gym about five, then okay. I work out. Uh, finish about seven, get home for about eight, and then okay. I don't eat. I don't usually eat till midnight because when I get home, that's when I want to work on YouTube and other stuff I've got going on. Okay. Now, once you eat, you feel like very dizzy and very tired, and you want to sleep or you want to lie on the couch uh, after eating. Yeah, I I thought I would feel tired, but I I don't. I feel more energized each day. I'm sleeping about six hours a day, but I'm still feeling ready to go again. Because I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Okay, okay. I think that's the main thing that's just keeping me going. If I wasn't enjoying it, then I'd wake up like, ah, another day. But I'm waking up ready to go again. I'm waking up early and then whole day work and then work out and then YouTube videos and sleeping again around 12 or after no, midnight? No, I, I eat at midnight. <laughs> eat dinner at midnight okay. and then uh, sleep, sleep at one. Okay, okay, okay. And then next day you wake up again. Yep. <laughs> Good uh, schedule you have. Actually, I have same kind of schedule. It's not like exactly same. But but my workouts have ch- uh, changed. I used to just go Monday to Friday, but now I go uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, this okay. is in the evenings, and then Saturday and Sunday I go in the mornings. 
Okay, so uh, you're you're doing two body parts uh, at a day, or just one single body part? I alternate. On Mondays, I do a full body, apart from legs. So I do two exercises in the chest, two exercises back, two shoulders, two biceps, okay. Okay. abs, and cardio. So which uh, body part you actually love to work out in gym mostly? I'm gonna which, say uh, legs. Okay. I like the pump. Legs. Yeah. Because it's difficult, so, it's not easy, it's a mental game with legs. You want to stop, but it's just keep pushing. It's a mental game, and that's why most of the people hate doing legs and have chicken legs. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They're like, oh, I'm not experiencing this pain anymore, time to skip it. The pain like, is uh, nice, though. They're just like, let's do bench press and some barbell curls. <laughs> and- that's what all the, all the January 1st do. Oh, talking about January 1st, they're coming... Do you have yeah, that over yeah. in India on January 1st? Gym owners are having a lot of cash. <laughs> the New it. Year's resolutions, they come into the gym. Yeah, it's like in every country. People are the same everywhere. Uh, they're the <laughs> same. So whether it's in UK or in India. They come uh, for two weeks first. and then they're gone. And they will take actually one year of membership. And they will be like only for one month. After yeah. February, everyone will go bye-bye. <laughs> yes, that, that is exactly what happens. We are talking about workouts and exercises. So, which exercises you actually think are good for your? What ex- uh, which exercises you actually like most in doing your leg workout? Um, I'd say front squats and back squats. Okay, so you do front squats as well and back squats as well on the same day. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Another thing I do is wall sits. So you sit on sit against a wall and have plates yeah. on your lap and just oh, yeah. sit there. Okay, hold it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it just okay. burns the quads. So, what about hamstrings? Hamstrings, I like. Um, well, let's see. I like my gym doesn't have it, but the other gyms that I've been to in the past, where you lie down and you got okay. the lying hamstring machine, that was probably yeah, my best hamstring. machine. Okay. Uh, have you tried uh, doing uh, workouts using Swiss ball? Just the Swiss ball. Just a Swiss ball. No, I never do that. <laughs> you should definitely, definitely try a coordination workout, like a coordination uh, workout in which uh, you are with your knees on your Swiss ball and you have yeah. to balance everything. You have to balance your uh, whole body onto that Swiss ball. So it sounds Swiss like a CrossFit other. <laughs> no, it's, actually not, it's all about... Uh, a proper balance, creating a proper balance with your nervous systems and your joints and your muscles. So it's very, actually, it's very important for your coordination. Or total Stabilization coordination. as well. So uh, just do, just do like, maybe, I don't think you will find a YouTube, just, just uh, stand in front of Swiss ball and then uh, uh, lean forward with your knees exactly touching that Swiss ball in, in between and stand on that Swiss ball without any support in front of and it. It's actually very difficult. Have and you done it? Kind of, yeah, I used to do on daily basis. I, I told you that I used to work out with Swiss Ball and TRX and... Uh, I'm waiting and for you up. to upload the video, otherwise there's no proof you've done it. <laughs> I'm gonna, now you have that on your mind. You need to upload it. Put that on your notes right now. Your next video has to be that. It's on my uh, list, actually. Uh, <laughs> yesterday only I... Yesterday only I uh, free from all my uh, university's exams for my post graduation exam. So right now I will be totally focusing on my uh, workouts and videos. And so yeah, there are a lot of uh, like around 25 to 30 videos. I have created this, those lists while I was traveling. So they are on and my list. I've noticed your videos, you speak Punjabi. Are you going to start speaking <laughs> more English or are you going to stay? You, you, uh, you know what? I, uh, Actually, I'm shocked that you uh, know that there is a Punjabi kind of word. Uh, it's, it's a kind of language. I don't know that you are uh, heard of, heard Punjabi uh, as before as well. I am. That's why. <laughs> you are Punjabi? Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you are Punjabi? <laughs> you didn't know. Oh, man. I thought you knew. No oh, man, I didn't know. Your name is Dylan D Y L A, and it's a kind of uh, English name. How could you like? You are Indian. Yeah, but born and raised in UK. 
Actually, I'm also Indian. Then we are brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh but the thing is i was uh, when i used to get messages in my dm and in my comment section that hey rohit uh, please make videos on hindi and at same time i was like yeah man i'm good in hindi not that much good in english but, but don't you <laughs> but think if if you done it in english it would reach a bigger audience cuz m- uh, most people understand english exactly but the thing is uh, there are lot of lot of audience from india which are which actually that is what i think they are getting misguided by but let's let's say cuz like now you're doing a collaboration with me i know most of my viewers are from the us so let's say in the future you do um a collab with a fitness youtuber um exactly and they're an english talker most of their audience okay. are most likely going to be english as well i can say thing that when uh, you approached me for this podcast i never thought of uh about uh, getting some uh what i say uh, followers or friends or things from <laughs> your side to my channel because when people collab they always think like hey i want to get his or her audience onto my channel and everything but i was like more into because i personally loved you like as a bro lover not that kind of thing because <laughs> my youtube channel just because of you like first first video was uh, made by my friend and he edited uh, with some i think movie from maker software i don't know from he only did whatever thing he did i don't know anything but when i started after 5 4 to 5 months i watched uh, your friend's video yeah. i think name is alex some alex name his name is so i didn't like the way he used to and his his most of the videos are and um, actually uh, what uh, what i found it that uh, totally clickbait and uh, not relevant to me and uh, you did some collab with him and yeah. i get to know about and and from there i get to know about your channel after i think two months of following him and after getting to know your channel your videos i made my first video using adobe premiere pro at that yeah. time first, first video of fitness right of me working out some uh, sprinting and skipping workouts and yeah. then from then uh, that guy i actually unfollowed one subscribe totally <laughs> because i don't subscribe any because i don't subscribe any kind of channel which i don't like so i subscribed you and from now from there i uh, learned things like uh, crazy things from uh, you then i switched then i actually saw your channel your videos are mainly from vegas pro yeah then i started then i installed vegas pro then i started learning vegas pro watching your videos <laughs> downloading your it's been like 8 to 9 months i'm doing the, doing this thing now i when i your premiere like, on you yeah then for like more than 8 months i uh, just learned things from vegas pro from your channel from your videos started making thumbnails from photoshop learning your videos of photoshop uh, doing some correction from audacity from your videos and like like casual salute is life like for me it was like that thing so yeah. when so, so i was talking like when you, when you approached me for this podcast i just wanted to talk to you and you same coming from like fitness interest so i was like let's do this so and that's why i also liked doing it because it's a topic i also enjoy so you asked me that uh, why don't you talk in english and for english collaboration for me with respect to you it was like just to talk and just to converse have a conversation that's it but in india actually i think i have have much more responsible to my uh, citizens like being an indian i know hindi and i have seen there are a lot of people in india uh, yeah. who are youtubers fitness youtubers they are like 1 million subscribers uh, 5 lakh subscribers and they are just telling shit to every <laughs> consumer really i'm telling you saying drink green tea lose weight drink apple cider vinegar lose weight is the weight. same thing over and over again and uh have this uh some kind of ashwagandha and different that's what of, you need uh, to do how to lose 200 pounds in weight in one week just do some good food and shop making videos <laughs> telling that increase your height by 2 feet in one week these kind of videos are there in in indian <laughs> this is not they will make like a lot of videos which i can't even think about so uh, why i'm getting comments in my youtube section i'm getting requests in my instagram thing 
uh, speak in Hindi, make videos in Hindi, and I was actually more comfortable in Hindi rather than English. And yeah. Because of you talking, we are like conversating in English, and this is not my mother language. My mother language is Hindi. So I, th- I decided that from from this video onwards, I will make all my videos in Hindi. So let's reach my audience first, and then we will. And once if I succeeded, I will maybe thinking about doing it in English. That was the story. Um, but that's the end of this podcast. I'll be back for another podcast next week, and hopefully it'll be with another guest. That's the end. <laughs>